Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Forensic Frenzy's Idaho 4 series. As always, thank you for watching, and I appreciate all of your support. Today we are going to take a look at 86 of what I believe are 90 of the search warrants that were served in the Idaho 4 Brian Koberger case between the dates of November 17th, 2022 and returned before September 6th of 2023. So of my count, we have at least 90 search warrants, 9090 search warrants that were served. Three to four of which are entirely redacted hidden documents, 86 of which have been redacted and yet some information still made its way into the I-Court portal. So today you are going to have to trust me. I have shown you twice now in this video and the last video how to get to the iCourt portal and find your own receipts for this video. Pulling up receipts for each of the 86 warrants would just be entirely too long of a video for me to even justify. Screenshotting receipts for all of the 86 warrants is insane. So you're just going to have to trust me and go back into iCourt and find receipts for yourself. Um, just choose any warrant, double check the dates, and there you got receipt, okay? If you happen to find any that do have an error, please let me know, but I do believe that I have everything in here listed correctly. We are going to take a look at this three different ways. We are going to look at a chart that I have formed that shows who had which or what warrants or warrant served for them by victim, by defendant, and by documents that are left blank. This will help us figure out again who had which warrants served to which entities pertaining to them. It'll also help us to overlap who had used or had some of the same types of phones, bank accounts, social medias, and other communications like email. Then we will look at these warrants by date of service. That will help us to determine what law enforcement wanted to know and at what point in their investigation or when they wanted to know said information. Then we will look at these warrants by return date. And that will help us to determine at what point in the investigation or when law enforcement would have likely known the information that they were looking for or known that their assumptions had been incorrect in the instance that the information they were looking for went unfounded. So again, the overlap chart is going to help us figure out who had which warrants served for them who had overlapping warrants served for the same places. The service date charts will help us determine what law enforcement was looking for and when. And the return date charts will help us determine when that information would have come back as founded or unfounded. So let's go ahead and get into this. As promised, we will start with which warrants were served for whom. So as you can see here, 
this table lists the warrants in row or going horizontally alphabetically across the very top row you see the individuals or the information that the warrant may have pertained to. So let's go across the top row. Now, while the entire chart itself is kind of like a seafoam-ish green, what represents 1122 King Road is in a slightly darker green. What represents Maddie Mogan is pink. Zana Kernodal is the lighter blue. The boy who wore blue, Ethan Chapin, is the darker blue. Kaylee Gonzalez is purple. Dylan Mortensen is this pale peach color. Bethany Funk is this lilac, light purplish pink color. The defendant in red and in yellow, all blank documents. Documents with no information. So there's pages, but all the information is redacted from the pages that we have. The next row will indicate how many others were redacted from the document at minimum, if there were any. And the row furthest to the right will indicate any notes or things that stuck out to me about the warrant. Some of these warrants were served multiple times. When we get to them, I will let you know. So we'll start with Amazon. The Amazon warrants, the first was blanket looking for any and all purchases and click information. But then there was another Amazon warrant and there were three identifiers, a name, shipping address, and email. A search warrant for Amex was served pertaining to all four of the victims. On this search warrant, they requested information pertaining to at least five others, three of which were founded on the return. Apple. We have four warrants, one for each of the victims, as well as a warrant that has pages upon which two Apple IDs are redacted. There was a slew of warrants for AT&T, initially for the tower dump information, then for data records associated with two telephone numbers that appeared to have been on the tower dump. Then, on the 23rd of December, for the current defendants, cast historical data records. In the PCA, law enforcement states, that on the 23rd when they received this information, they had reason to believe that Brian Koberger had been in the area of the crime scene 12 times minimum prior to November 13th when they allege he enacted the crimes. Beyond that, I believe there are at least one, is at least one, possibly two, additional AT&T warrants. Those do not have specific information on them. The Bank of America was served a search warrant pertaining to all four of the victims. We will talk about banks and finances as well. This chart will show you that one additional search warrant was sought out for Kaylee Gonzalez's finances more than the other victims. In other words, they all had the same amount of finance records served a search warrant with the exclusion of one, which belonged to 
Kaylee Gonzalez, new Range Rover Evoke. Banner Bank, also served. Four, four victims. Block, also finances for the four victims. All three banks, law enforcement did request additional information for at minimum five others, to which three were founded. Blue Ridge Knives, a blank and blanket document. The Coeur d'Alene Forensics Lab, blank. Charter Communications, 41122 King Road. Discover, for all the same individuals that the bank finances pertain to. The four victims, and at minimum three redacted others. DoorDash, for the home. Dropbox, blank. eBay, blanket also had to be amended. Elon Financial, again, pertaining to the Range Rover. Kaylee Gonzalez only. Extreme, Kaylee's job, her laptop for work. Kaylee Gonzalez only. Facebook, the six people in the home, the night of the attacks, the four victims, and the two surviving roommates. Google, Kaylee Gonzalez, the defendant, and then there are multiple, five blanket, I'm sorry, blank documents for Google. Idaho Department of Labor, the same as all the other finance records. The four victims and at least three redacted found it. Idaho Central Credit Union, the same, and Lynn Cellular appears to be blank. It does not appear that anyone from Inland Cellular was founded on the tower dot. Therefore, it appears to be almost not applicable. Instagram, Maddie Mogan, Zana Kernodal, Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonzalez, Dylan Mortensen, Bethany Funk, and the defendant. K-Bar, blank, blanket. Moscow Police Department, forensics lab. This actually is incorrect. It is not blanket. That is for the defendant. It is for his computer, um, I'm sorry, his hard drive from his computer and his phone. Microsoft OneDrive, blank, Numerica Credit Union, all of the same finance factors as the other finance search warrants. PayPal Venmo, this one is slightly different. This one also has a blank warrant. Potlatch, Federal Credit Union. The four victims, and at least three founded, redacted others. Reddit, Kaylee Gonzalez and the defendant. Snapchat, Maddie Mogan, Zana Kernodal, Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonzalez, Dylan Mortensen, Bethany Funk. Spotify, blank. Strava, blank. TikTok, Maddie Mogan, Zana Kernodal, Ethan Chapin. Kaylee Gonzalez, Dylan Mortensen, Bethany Funk, and the defendant. Tinder, Maddie Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, and then there are blank documents for Tinder. With a total of 39 minimum redacted others. 20 on one warrant, 19 on another. T-Mobile for Kaylee Gonzalez and at least one other. Twitter, the defendant. 
Of note, there is also a Twitter account for Zana Kernodal that has been active since about 2012. There was no warrant served for that account. Umpqua Bank was served two separate warrants. They were served on the same day. Um, and one was for the finances of the four students who were attacked, as well as the three minimum founded others. However, there was another for the exterior security footage from the bank on the night of November 12th from 9 p.m. until approximately noon on November 13th of 2022. There was a blank warrant for UPS. No name on the warrant, but the warrant does tell you at least that they were looking for all truck video from November 6th of 2022 to November 14th of 2022. All truck video in Moscow. There was a warrant for Verizon for Ethan Chapin, as well as two minimum redacted others. There was a warrant for Walmart that is blank. Wells Fargo, all of the same financial information, the four victims plus at minimum three founded redacted others. Yahoo for Kaylee Gonzalez. Yik Yak for the defendant and YouTube which is also blank. So let's go back and we'll talk about some of the things we see here and what we don't. Amazon, if the knife was purchased on Amazon, the warrant does not say the defendant's name specifically. It does have specific identifiers, so they do know who they think bought something on Amazon. We do not know as of public record yet that it was the defendant. There are not too many more finance accounts for Kaylee Gonzalez than there are for the rest of the students. There's only one. There were six Apple devices that were sought. Multiple warrants to AT&T. None of the warrants for the knife have any information on them. There are two forensics labs involved in this situation, one of which we do know, um, the Moscow Police Department Forensics Lab was in charge of Brian Koberger's external hard drive and his phone. As far as the house goes, they searched Charter and DoorDash for the actual home. There are mass storage things that are involved here, such as Dropbox and Microsoft OneDrive, um, Google um, storage that are entirely redacted. The only computer that was checked into other than Brian's is Kaylee's. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. Okay. All six of the victims, um, the four deceased, as well as the two surviving roommates, had a Facebook. I do not see a warrant for a Facebook for the defendant. There is an overlap between Kaylee, the defendant, and the blanks between the Google warrants. Do I think that means anything? Um, not necessarily pertaining Kaylee. I do wonder if the overlap between the blanks and the defendant is A, the defendant having more than one account, or B, the defendant sharing things through like uh, Google Drive or whatever. Um, everyone has Instagram. There is no blank documents for Instagram. There are no blank documents for Instagram. Let's see what else? Again, Microsoft OneDrive, blank. Um, PayPal Venmo, that blank. Um, Amazon, also blank. You pay 
on Amazon with PayPal Venmo. So uh, that's an option. So let's see. Reddit, there is an overlap between Kaylee and the defendant. Snapchat. And these six people in the home that night have Snapchat warrants. TikTok. The six people in the home that night plus the defendant. Tinder. Maddie Mogan. Kaylee Gonzalez. And then there are that uh, those two blank documents. Um, again, Umpqua was interesting because the exterior bank footage um, from 9 p.m. on November 12th until noon on November 13th. UPS is also, also interesting because they want video um, for the week um, surrounding the murder um, from the 6th of November to the 14th of November, 2022. Walmart, also interesting because it is blank, but we do know that there was a Walmart receipt found in like a closet um, at Brian Koberger's apartment. So that's interesting. Um, YouTube, blank, very interesting. Um, Spotify, blank, very interesting. Both um, provide the, uh, the ability to broadcast. Mm -hmm. Facebook's interesting. Um, because there is not a blank um, warrant, nor is there one for the defendant. Um, Papa Roger. So Facebook's interesting. Um, see if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about with this. Okay, good. So I think final thing on that. Um, on the left, you are looking at what was founded for the defendant. I'm sorry, for the students on the left, on the right in the pinkish bubble, you are looking at what was founded for the defendant. In the center, you are seeing the things where there were some type of overlap, um, which could lead to the potential that on any of these things, the defendant did come across um, whichever student may have owned the account or accounts. Um, I'm not saying that that is true. However, I am saying that if he were to have been stalking someone, or even a friend or a follower of someone on any type of account, it would have had to have been one of the four in the center of the Venn diagram. Instagram, TikTok, Tinder, or he would have had to have encountered Kaylee through Reddit. Next, we're going to review the warrants in order of their service date. So the order in which the warrants were served upon the entities. Again, this will help us to understand what they were looking for, law enforcement, what they were looking for, and when they were looking for it. Why you think they were looking for it at that time is up to you. I am here to tell you what they were looking for and when. Nonetheless, I will tell you what I make of these things. Don't take my word for it. So on November 16th, warrants for phones by carrier went out. AT&T, Inland, T-Mobile, Verizon. Those were returned around the 17th and 18th. The warrant for T-Mobile was amended. On November 19th, warrants were served for finance entities. Finance entities, sorry guys. Bank of America, Block, Umpqua Bank, PayPal Venmo, Umpqua Bank again, the security footage. And on November 19th, I believe, law enforcement was already trying to disprove the DoorDash purchase by checking banks for all 
of the victims. On November 20th, warrants go out for Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit. On November 21st, four warrants go out, one for the Apple device of each victim, the Charter Communications warrant for their Spectrum Wi-Fi, as well as four additional warrants for the victims, Facebook and Instagram accounts, as well as two warrants for Snapchat. Zana, Ethan, and Kaylee together on one warrant, Maddie Mogan separately on a second. Additionally, on November 21st, there is a warrant served to, I'm sorry, obtained for Walmart. It is not served until November 28th. On November 26th, there is another warrant for Amazon, eBay, and that amended warrant for T-Mobile. On November 28th, there is a warrant served for Amex, Banner Bank, Discover Bank, an amended warrant for eBay, Idaho Central Credit Union, Idaho Department of Labor, and Numerica Credit Union. Potlatch, number one credit union, and Wells Fargo Bank. On November 29th, there are two warrants, one for K-Bar and the other for the Match Group Tinder account of Kaylee Gonzalez. This we will look at twice. In the February 2024 court hearing, Ann Taylor states that it is critical for her to determine how law enforcement got to Brian Koberger, to which Judge John Judge stated, that most of what occurred happened before November 29th. Let's keep that in mind. As we move forward, we have just met everything that they searched for up through November 29th. We will revisit this when we look at what they had returned to them by November 29th. On December 1st, law enforcement served a warrant for the Yahoo account of Kaylee Gonzalez. On December 2nd, there was another warrant for Facebook, Instagram, or Meta platforms, as well as a warrant for UPS, United Parcel Services. This warrant was looking for, again, all truck video from November 6th of 2022 through November 14th of 2022. All delivery trucks in the Moscow area. Now, are there not that many? On December 4th, there was a warrant for Google. This warrant was for Kaylee's Google. On December 6th, there was a warrant for DoorDash, as well as a warrant for 20 or 19. I can't remember which was the first, but there was um, a warrant for um, Tinder as well for Maddie Mogan on the 6th. And either 20 or 19 redacted accounts. There was a warrant for Tinder for both 20 and 19 redacted accounts. Again, I just can't remember which one was on December 6th. December 12th, Blue Ridge Knives and Extreme Networks, which is Kaylee's work computer. They wanted decrypted access to her work laptop. On December 13th, there was a warrant for TikTok for the three female victims, Maddie, Kaylee, and Zana. 
On December 22nd, there was a warrant for Elon Financial for Kaylee's new Range Rover. On December 22nd, the alternative redacted Tinder warrant also went out. So if on the 6th, there were 19 redacted accounts, then on the 22nd, there were 20 or vice versa. If on the 6th, there were 20, then on the 22nd, there were 19. Again, I am so sorry, guys, because I really wish I had remembered which was which. Um, I do think the difference of one account is going to matter. <sighs> on December 23rd, a warrant was served for AT&T for Brian's cast historical data. <clears throat> there are, one, two, three, at least three blank hidden documents, documents we don't know what the warrant was even served to, like what entity. But there are also documents that are entirely sealed with no pages inside of them, um, just the motion to seal, the order to seal, and then the seal and redact. And those are four, Coeur d'Alene Forensics Lab, Verizon Wireless, Washington State University, Google, 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 and 1122 King Road. These are the warrants that were obtained and served moving into 2023. in order as they were obtained and served. We will get back to these. In the meantime, since we've now met December 30th, looking at things in order of service date, which is the day that Brian was arrested, let's go back and look at those same things in order of return date, building up to when law enforcement had probable cause to arrest Brian Koberger. And I am so sorry, guys, because I did not even explain to you how the newer charts that you're looking at work. Okay, so the highlighted column in the peach is the actual warrant. The next um, vertical column is the day that it was obtained. The next vertical column is the day that it was served. The last vertical column is the day that it was returned. So we were just looking um, at these in the order in which they were obtained and served. So the first two columns, we are now going to look at them in the order in which they were returned. So we are going to focus on the peach column um, and compare it to the, the column on the right, the third col fourth column there, which will tell you the date that it was returned. So the very first column and then the very last column. And I'm sorry, again, guys, I'm getting my shit together. On November 17th, the very first search warrants were returned for AT&T and Lynn Cellular and Verizon Wireless. They were for the tower dumps. The next day on the 18th, the T-Mobile tower dump returned as well. On the 20th, Block Finance also returned. And on the 21st, they got information from PayPal Venmo for the four students plus the three redacted others, as well as information from Meta or Facebook, Instagram. On the 22nd, they received back the warrant from Charter Communication for the Spectrum Wi-Fi. The next day on the 23rd, they received back two warrants from Apple for the devices of Maddie Mogan and Xana Chernobyl as well as the information for the finance records of the four students and the three redacted others from Umpqua Bank and the exterior bank security footage from Umpqua Bank located in downtown Moscow. On the 25th, they received back the warrant from Apple for Ethan Chapin's Apple device. On the 28th, they received back a warrant from eBay as well as their amended warrant from T-Mobile. On the 29th, they received back the warrant from Apple pertaining to the device of Kaylee Gonsalves, as well as their warrant from eBay. I'm sorry, the first eBay warrant was the original. 
This one on the 29th is the amended. They also received back their warrant from Numerica Credit Union, as well as the warrants for the Snapchats of all four victims. So let's go back to when Judge John Judge told Ann Taylor that how law enforcement got to Brian Koberger, well, most of what occurred happened before November 29th. <clears throat> Yet there was no arrest on November 29th. So there was no probable cause on November 29th. So probable cause developed post November 29th. So what happened before November 29th that led to Brian Koberger? How did law enforcement ascertain probable cause to arrest after November 29th? Let's use the documents and charts to determine if we can figure out how. I'll go ahead and pause this for you. And again, rattle off everything that they had returned back to them by the 29th. In addition to finding the defendant's car at WSU. And realizing that his license picture matched Dylan's description. They had the tower dumps, information from some banks, information from Facebook, Instagram, information from the Wi-Fi, all four of the victim's phones, the exterior bank security footage from Uncle Bank, not one but two warrants into eBay, as well as Snapchat for all four victims. I'll let you build your case while I go over the documents that I think they used to build probable cause. On November 30th, Idaho Central Credit Union, as well as the Department of Labor, both returned, as well as four warrants for Meta platforms, Facebook, Instagram. On December 1st, Banner Bank returned. And on the 2nd, Yahoo and KBAR. On December 5th, two men at the local business. A warrant returned for Tinder, as well as the security truck, the truck security video from UPS. On December 6th, a warrant returned for Bank of America. And on the 7th, the warrant for DoorDash returned. On the 7th, two more warrants for Match Group Tinder returned, one for Maddie Mogan, and again, the other for the redacted accounts, either 19 or 20. On the 8th, a warrant returned for Amazon, as well as Meta Platforms, Facebook, Instagram. On the 9th, Discover Bank and Potlatch, number one, Credit Union, as well as Walmart. On the 14th, Extreme Networks for Kaylee's computer. On the 16th, Blue Ridge Knives. On the 19th, Google and Reddit. And on the 23rd, Elon Financial and the Cast Historica data for Brian's AT&T phone ending in 8458. On the 26th of December, the opposing warrant for the redacted accounts returned from Match Group Tinder for either 19 or 20 accounts. Again, totaling between the two warrants, 39 redacted accounts. The day that the defendant was arrested, a warrant returned for Wells Fargo Bank. Again, because there was no arrest on the 29th, there was no probable cause. So probable cause developed post November 29th. What happened before November 29th clearly led to Koberger. However, law enforcement ascertained probable cause post November 29th. I'll leave it to you to use the documents and charts to determine just how.
and I care about you guys. So I will let you take a look at the Venn diagram right next to what they had up through November 30th. Okay. Mind you, you're going to want to stop at the 29th, but of the things in the red, Instagram, TikTok, Tinder, Reddit. On the 21st, they did actually have information back from meta platforms, Facebook, Instagram. Aside from that, they had some finance records, the tower dumps. The Apple device records of the four victims, the bank security footage, and Snapchat, as well as eBay. So those are the things that you can use to formulate up to your dark blue box. What happened that led to fingering him? Now for your light blue box and your green box, okay? Well, mostly your light blue box, but for your light blue box, you're going to wanna figure out what happened after they pointed at him that got a judge to sign those papers. Ironically, the very next day on the 30th, more information comes back from Meta Platforms. And moving forward, possibly to build our probable cause, we have more finances, K-Bar, Tinder, something from UPS, DoorDash, Kaylee's computer, her Yahoo, another Amazon, more Facebook, Instagram, and because we don't have a warrant for the defendant or a blank for Facebook, these things are likely the Instagram portion of Meta that they are looking into. Discover, Potlatch, Banks, Walmart, Blue Ridge Knives, Google, Kaylee's Reddit. Not the defendants. AT&T, the cast records for the defendant. Match Group Tinder, Wells Fargo, Elon, Banks. So of these things, what presents probable cause that got the judge to sign the arrest warrant for Brian Koberger? Okay, so we've now worked our way through November 13th to November 29th when law enforcement openly admits that Brian Koberger was fully on their radar at that point. We've worked through it in order of service and in order of return date. From there, from them putting their finger on Brian Koberger on November 29th, we worked through them arresting him in Pennsylvania on December 30th in order of service date and in order of return date. So in good spirit, Let's go ahead and take a look at what happened after they arrested Brian Koberger in Pennsylvania in order of service date and in order of return date. So following Brian Koberger's arrest, the raids at his parents' home, his apartment, his office, and the search on his car, law enforcement searched in order of service, Google on January 3rd. On January 9th, they searched the Moscow Police Department forensics lab. They got his external hard drive and his phone. On January 25th, another warrant for Google. On January 30th, Dropbox. 
On January 26th, a warrant for Yik Yak and Match Group Tinder. On February 6th, these are a little out of order. I'm sorry, guys. These must be in order by obtained date, not served date. Sorry, guys. So let's see. On January 26th, Reddit and TikTok. On February 6th, Twitter. On February 25th, Google. On March 1st, Strava. That's like the running tracking app. On April 3rd, AT&T, Snapchat, Meta, Facebook, Instagram, Meta, Facebook, Instagram. On April 3rd, Verizon Wireless. On April 20th, Meta, Facebook, Instagram. On May 10th, Amazon. July 25th, PayPal, Venmo, Meta, Facebook, Instagram. Microsoft, TikTok, Spotify, YouTube. And on August 1st, Apple for two redacted Apple IDs. So the order that those things returned in, in 2023, post Koberger's arrest, Google, first, on January 4th, before Brian Koberger had even been um, extradited back, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at two things that go along with this Google. This is the warrant from December 23rd. There were two, okay? One was looking for his historical data pertaining to um, the entirety of opening the phone to present day, December 23rd, 2022. This one was looking to see where he was um, between 12 a.m. on November 12th and 12 a.m. on November 14th. Remember, Brett Payne stated that he looked for Brian um, within the day prior and the day after the attacks, okay? So this one, as you can see, I'm trying to make it as nice and big as I can there without taking it off the screen. <laughs> this one actually has phone number, right? Blank, one phone number. Okay, now let's go over and take a look at that Google document. Okay, and this one I can't make as big or you guys will miss the point here, I think. All right. Google account of Brian C. Koberger with any of the following identifiers. Email address of blank and or Google accounts associated with the following telephone numbers. More than one. Blank and or blank, or any Google accounts associated with the following IMEI. -E blank and or blank. One IMEI -E though, two telephone numbers. And then they just let me scroll back up to the top so that you can see. This is the warrant for January 3rd that was served on the third and the information came back on the fourth. So this is the very first warrant that they served and received back. Once they finished all the rating on his apartment, his car, his office, his parents' house, they went for a Google warrant that had more than one phone number on it. But on the 23rd, they only had one phone number for Brian Koberger leading me to believe that they found a second phone during some portion of the raids. Okay, so back to what they got in terms of return date. First, that Google with the two phone numbers. Then they went to the Moscow Police Department Forensics Lab and picked up an external hard drive and a phone. Amex from way back in November finally came back on December, or I'm sorry, January 13th, okay? On January 26th, they get match group Tinder. 
And the next day on the 27th, they get Yik Yak. On February 2nd, they get Dropbox. And on February 8th, they get that Reddit for Brian Koberger that isn't opened until March 22nd. On February 12th, they get Twitter. And on February 19th, another Google. And then on February 19th, TikTok comes back for Maddie, Kaylee, Zana from way back in December. And on March 9th, they get another Google. And on March 15th, Strava, the running thing. And then on the 31st, TikTok pertaining to the defendant. Now, in between Strava and TikTok, we've had the private investigator for the defense, Richard Batanti, um, state that Bethany Funk, they know she has exculpatory evidence. Um, we've had the prosecutor come out and say there may be an issue with one of these officers with Brady and Gilio. Um, we've had the out-of-state um, service for Bethany Funk begin to develop. Um, and now we're rolling into April of 2023, where all of the does she or does she not have to come into court stuff um, was going on. On April 12th, they got back another warrant for AT&T. Two phones on the Google. New warrant for AT&T. On April 12th, they also received another warrant return from Snapchat. On April 26th, they received more information from Meta for Facebook, Instagram. On May 1st, they received another warrant for Verizon Wireless, which is interesting to me because I know that Ethan had Verizon Wireless, obviously he and his siblings and, you know, his parents or whatever. But I don't know how this, this, how many, these, there are so many Verizon Wireless. I mean, we know that Kaylee had T-Mobile and there aren't that many T-Mobile warrants. You know, there are so many Verizon Wireless warrants. So that's just interesting to me. But anyway, um, May 1st, Verizon Wireless comes back. May 9th, another Instagram, Facebook situation. May 12th, another Facebook, Instagram situation. So now we are at four days prior to indicting Brian Koberger. Okay. We have returns from everything we've talked about so far, all the way from the beginning, all the way up to May 12th, where we get this final, um, well, not final, but this additional Facebook, Instagram return. So now on May 30th, after Brian's been indicted, okay, another T-Mobile warrant comes back. And on June 27th, okay, so after um, the objection from Ann Taylor on June 22nd, okay, when she states that um, more or less Brian Koberger had no connection to the victims and all of that, um, that there was no reason for the lack of DNA in the car and stuff like that. Just a few days after that, okay, and I'm only telling you these things so that you know where we are in the timeline. Just a few days after that, we got another warrant for Amazon back, okay? And then a month, uh, just about a month later on July 26th, we got a warrant for Spotify. It's an entirely blank warrant. It's just random, okay? Um, on August 1st of 2023, we got a warrant back for PayPal Venmo. And then on August 8th, we got a warrant back for YouTube. Another one of those just broadcasting things. It's just blank document. doesn't really say Brian's name, but it is a part of this case in some way, apparently. On August 9th, we got back two, uh, I'm sorry, one Apple warrant for two Apple IDs. On August 17th, we got back a warrant for the TikTok of Dylan, Bethany, and Ethan. And on August 23rd, we got back a warrant from Microsoft for OneDrive. And then on September 6th of 2023, the very last warrant that I see on the iCourt portal, so the very last warrant that we know of so far, was returned. And it was from Facebook 
Instagram. And thus, right now, we do not know that another search warrant was ever served. Obviously, if some appear in the iCourt portal down the road, then that means that more were served after this, the return on the 6th of September 2023. But as of right now, it looks like the last warrant that was served was on July 24th of 2023. Just kidding. August 1st of 2023. And the last return, it looks like, was September 6th of 2023. So let me go back and I'll tell you it was Apple, the two redacted Apple IDs on August 1st. That was um, the last served. The last returned was Facebook, Instagram on September 6th of 2023. And again, just to keep in mind, we have hidden documents, documents that are entirely redacted. We don't even know what the entity is that the document was served to. They are on November 16th of 2022, December 5th of 2022, January 10th of 2023. Three for sure, and there may be another one. I would have to double check before I could guess. But in addition to these warrants, which are available in the iCourt portal for you to see that they exist and there are um, like motions to seal, orders to seal, seal and redact, and you can see what they were served to, but there's no additional pages, okay? Whereas those hidden warrants, they don't tell you what they were served to. So everything else is set up the same way, but what they were served to is entirely redacted. So in addition to those, we have the redacted warrant for 1122 King Road, the redacted warrant for Coeur d'Alene Forensics Lab, three redacted warrants for Google, a redacted warrant for Verizon Wireless, and a redacted warrant for Washington State University. What's interesting about that is that I do have a plethora of information as to what came from Washington State University pertaining to the current defendant. So keeping in mind the overlap between the warrants on the left that were served for the students and the warrants on the right that were served for the defendant. The overlap being the center of the Venn diagram, Instagram, TikTok, Tinder, Reddit. then what is the story of how law enforcement got to Brian Koberger? What is the most of what occurred that happened before November 29th, according to Judge John Judge? And is whatever else is left building probable cause as well as evidence and proof, or is what is left the things that negated everyone else, allowing you to understand that the only option was the person on November 29th that you had overlooked. Either way, there was no arrest on November 29th, so there was no probable cause. So probable cause developed after November 29th, but before December 29th. Because an arrest was made on December 30th. And what does that leave to be said about all the documents that went on in 2023? If not, those are the things that they went back to repetitively to continue digging out more and more information. I don't really want to drag this on for too long, guys. And I do absolutely want to um, be able to run this in a live. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please feel free to watch as many times as you need to be able to fully grasp. Um, feel free to press pause and screenshot. Send things around. Double check things. Give me ideas. I'll give you mine. I love responding to you guys. 
Um, if you are someone who thinks that Brian Koberger had absolutely nothing to do with this, um, I also want to hear what you think as you look through these documents. Um, because I value what you think as you look through these documents. Like when they tell you something that goes along with whatever theory you have, I want to be able to partake. So please, no matter what you think, um, defendant innocent, defendant guilty, you're on the fence, you don't care, whatever the situation is, let me know what you think as we flow through the documents as to what caused them to finger Brian Koberger by the 29th of November? What caused them to feel like they had built probable cause and the judge then signed the arrest warrant on the 29th of November? You know the facts about the trash snatch and the paternity match. So keep in mind small things like that um, and fit them into where you see they go in the documents and tell me what it is that you think actually came out of law enforcement investigation other than exactly what was in the survey questions. Now, when it comes to the survey questions, and they were like, some of these are not even true. Some maybe used a little loosely. So let's talk about what I think the judge meant. Super quick before I get out of here. In addition to generic questions about the criminal justice system, Here's where we get to things that concern the state immensely. Question, have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger was arrested at his parents' home in Pennsylvania? Question, have you read, seen, or heard if police found a knife sheath on the bed next to one of the victims? Question, have you read, seen, or heard that DNA found on the knife sheath was later matched to Brian Koberger? Question, have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger owned the same type of car reported on video driving in the neighborhood where the killings occurred? Have you seen, read, seen, or heard if the cell phone tower data showed that Brian Koberger made several trips near the victim's home in the month before the killing? Have you read, seen, or heard if the university students in Moscow and their parents lived in fear until Brian Koberger was arrested for the murders? Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger said that he was out driving alone on the night of the murders? Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims? Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger had followed one of the victims on social media? All right, guys. So there was something that bothered me in this hearing in that portion. Um, and then it bothered me again later, but I didn't really make the connection right away, okay? So let's go forward in the hearing and I won't bother playing it, but there's a portion of the hearing where Judge John Judge is explaining to Ann Taylor why these questions were just not appropriate, okay? And he says to her, and frankly, some of them are just not true. And he laughs, okay? He gives it a giggle and it like ground my gears. It has every time I've watched the hearing and I just couldn't figure out like, what is he laughing at? You know, like, why would that be funny to him in a situation where families are watching, their kids have been slain and allegedly this is the man who did it and this woman is his defender there should be no giggles between the two of you in front of these families, okay? So when he laughed at her, I just couldn't let it go. But every time I listened back to these questions, I was looking for the lie or lies. Now, some people are confused because they think that the question said seven times in the month before the murders. 
I think that he actually said several times in the months before the murders. Because of that, I put that aside. Okay. But I think the one he giggled at, the one he is calling a lie, and it's now funny to me too, because I realize what he must have been doing there. It was that Brian Koberger was out driving alone. So this morning I posted a video where I showed you the responses to each question and where I pulled them out of a public record document from either law enforcement, the prosecution, or Ann Taylor. And the only statement that Ann Taylor made and only Ann Taylor made that I could actually find in public record was that Brian was out driving alone. He was calling her a liar right to her face and calling her client one too. And that retrospectively is funny. Anyway, regardless, okay, From what we have gathered here, there were too many warrants for meta platforms. And Brian Koberger, we don't have a Facebook warrant for him. Not yet. But Facebook, Instagram is a part of this situation. And there is an Instagram warrant for Brian. One to go along with all the kids in the house too. So that part, all the other stuff, all those other questions, that was Ann Taylor putting out the prosecution story. And Bill is pissed because... He doesn't even know hers, so he can't bite back. And all he could do was run in tattletale. And so he did. And it was beneficial for Ann to sprinkle in there. Did you even hear that he was out driving and alone? Because how many people heard all those other things but didn't hear that? How many people are listening to you, but not to me? So that's what I've got and what I wanted to close with here today. Again, thank you all for watching. I do hope to run this in a live, um, hopefully tomorrow, if not the next day. Um, let me know what you guys think. It's going to take a lot of digesting. It'll take you a while to watch this hour and 10 minutes of the video. It is not too super fast, but I did go through a lot of information in a really short amount of time. So take your time. Don't respond super quickly if you don't feel like you've grasped everything right away. Take your time and really give me your constructive ideas as to what you think. Regardless of if you think he's guilty or innocent or whatever, what do you think it is that law enforcement is alleging in these search warrants? And the reason I want to know is because they kind of pissed me off when they said that some of those questions are lies. I actually think what they wanted to say there is you gave away our story. So now the non-dissemination order on our end is useless because you gave away our story. So look back at those warrants. Tell me what you see getting built. Because regardless of the fact that I want to still be pretty 50-50 on whether or not he is or isn't guilty, when I look at the warrants, I only see them building what they're talking about, which they're now calling some of a lie. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching.